What's up, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, and of course, social media world. Welcome to the video feed for episode 45 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell It to the Wall, hosted by me, of course, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. That's right, episode 45, and uh, we're going to get into a couple things in the episode, but it's we, we've, we've hit a bit of, I don't want to call it a milestone, but a... A mile marker, maybe you could call it. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that because uh, it's it's been some some common sense spread around quite a bit here. So uh, and lots of other stuff too. And uh, I'm going to mention it during the actual episode, but we will be off next week uh, for Mother's Day. Going to spend the day with my wife and daughter uh, instead of taking time to get into the studio uh, next week. So we'll go through some of that stuff. Also, all the usual common sense. Uh, some digital trends this week, and definitely a little bit of ranting that's going to happen uh, regarding some common sense subjects going on uh, really around the world, but specifically uh, in the U.S. right now. So, all that being said, let's go ahead and get right into episode 45. Who want to do content? All right, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, welcome to episode 45 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell It's Wall, hosted by me, of course, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. We got an exciting episode for you today and a couple of quick announcements, but before we get there, we always kick things off with our social plugs. You can keep up with us during episodes, after episodes, for episodes, whenever you so please, and you can do that in multiple locations. One of those would be facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. That's right, facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. That is our official Facebook page. Make sure you like that page. Uh, follow that page because you you no longer like Facebook pages. Now you just follow them. Like you always liked and followed. I don't know. I never understand what's going on with the whole Facebook thing. I, I, I've... I feel like that has been a common theme through go not only Common Sense Sundays, but Go Tell It to the Wall, where Facebook just keeps throwing... It's like they're throwing paint on a painting and thinking it's just going to improve it, but it's like, no, no, you're just layering paint on top of a painting. But nonetheless, follow our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Go Tell It to the Wall. Uh, of course, our YouTube channel. Head over to YouTube, search Go Tell It to the Wall. You're going to find our YouTube channel right there. Subscribe. That's where you're going to find all of our video playlists, including Mental Health Mondays, Beer Reviews, all of these video feeds and formerly live feeds uh, that get posted after the fact. So make sure you are subscribed to that YouTube channel. And of course, my personal Instagram account, which is at SoCalSean, S-O-C-A-L-S-E-A-N. That's right, at SoCalSean. Uh, you're going to get Go Tell It to the Wall, Common Sense Sunday, Sean O'Rourke live content on there, as well as some kind of my own personal stuff. That's uh, I utilize that quite a bit. As you probably know, if you listen to the podcast even fairly regularly, you know this. Uh, and of course, most importantly, all-encompassing of those things I just mentioned, simply because you can link directly from there would be SeanO'RourkeLive.com. That's right, SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Uh, that is the official website for everything that is Common Sense Sundays, Go Tell It to the Wall, and your favorite podcast host, Sean O'Rourke. Uh, so make sure you got that one bookmarked as well. You're also going to find a link to our Patreon campaign on there. Please help us out if you have the means to do so. Uh, every little bit helps. We are on a big, big, big subscriber and Patreon push right now, so please make sure you're telling your friends, sharing your friends. Just takes two seconds to hit a share button. Help us out there. Uh, tell people, whatever it is. Get the word out. We appreciate all of the help that, that anybody out there, any listeners are giving us. Uh, and, of course, our merch website can di links directly from SeanOrourkeLive.com. Pick up some Go Tell It to the Wall merch for your everyday needs. Yeah. All right. Uh, so before we get into kind of the meat of episode 45, I do need to take a moment to recognize uh, that this is going to serve as essentially our one-year anniversary of Common Sense Sundays. That's right. Uh, we're actually just short of, of a year. Um, next Sunday would, would be the, the anniversary now week-wise, not the exact date because it's Sundays and no shift. Next Sunday would be the the anniversary of the very, very first Common Sense Sundays. Uh, now, obviously, Go Tell It to the Wall has been around for uh, uh, almost five years. We're coming up on the five-year anniversary of Go Tell It to the Wall, but, but Common Sense Sundays itself uh, is... is now officially one one year old, and it makes sense because I weekly episode 
episode 45 we take breaks throughout the year we have a holiday break uh super bowl break easter break you know so it makes sense i was like oh wait no oh looked at the date sure enough it's been a year of this which means obviously we all know we, we're well over a year uh, of dealing with covid uh despite the fact that we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel right now uh, but that goes hand in hand with with covid because we had to shift for those of you that haven't been around since the beginning we had a shift uh, from our thursday night format to sundays and therefore common sense sundays was born as opposed to just the go tell it to the wall uh, podcast which still exists and it's going to come back and, and i'll take a moment actually because i've gotten questions on this from from a few fans friends listeners of of the podcast uh, are we going to go back to the thursday format and uh, i can tell you i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes maybe we'll do a poll i, I don't know there will still be some of that uh, but I don't know if we're going to go back to the weekly, whatever it's going to be. We also have a lot of big stuff coming up on the horizon, a few collaborate collaborative things uh, that we're working on. So that's going to fill a lot of time. So I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I do enjoy Thursdays. And I know some people enjoy uh, when I, because we had a weekly beer. So I, I have a couple beers on Thursdays as opposed to Sunday afternoon, Thursday night. So there is that aspect of it. But I don't, I don't know if people <laughs> are really clamoring for that so much. Uh, and 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 we'll see once we get back to the live feeds because that, that's going to be a, a big determining factor in in how formats move forward. We're, we're not abandoning Common Sense Sundays. We've never abandoned Go to the Go Tell to Wall podcast, but we might shift things around a little depending on demand, uh, time, and, and and other collaborative efforts that are that are coming down the pipe here uh, over the next few months. So stay tuned. Lots of good stuff coming there. But uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who's listened over the past year. Thank you to everyone who's listened for the past almost five years, uh, but especially the past year, because we definitely gained, I personally gained some new friends doing this. Uh, we gained some some new fans and listeners, and, and our reach increased. Uh, so, so thank you to everyone that has helped that happen over the past year, uh, despite the fact that I've been stuck in my house and not actually able to see people face-to-face. -face. That's, that's not my skill set. It's not stuck in my house. I, I have... Horrible, crippling social anxiety, but once I get in front of people, that's where I tend to thrive and uh, haven't been able to do that. So, All right, uh, happy birthday and Mother's Day. I want to take a moment. Happy birthday to my mother. Her birthday was actually yesterday, May 1st, uh, so happy birthday to you, Ma. And I want to take a moment now, because there will be no episode next weekend, uh, to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. Uh, anyone who may be listening, uh, but especially Happy Mother's Day to my mother, uh, and a very, very, very Happy Mother's Day to my beautiful and amazing wife Diana, uh, who will be celebrating Mother's Day next weekend. So, uh, and like I said, Happy Mother's Day to all of you out there uh, that are mothers that have kids that are raising kids that are especially the past year dealing with kids in in quarantine and whatnot. Um, do it up for yourself. Do whatever you want. Don't do it up. Have fanciness or just. Lock yourself in a bedroom, whatever is uh, is your ideal Mother's Day. Uh, and like I said, no show next week. We will not have an episode next week. I will be spending time with my wife and daughter because it's Mother's Day. All right. Let's get into some digital trends. We don't have a lot this week, but I do want to talk about a couple things. Uh, this first one, <laughs> this was blowing up all over social media. And if there's one thing I love at Go to like... I have a love-hate relationship with them here at Go Tells the Wall. I hate them because obvious reasons, uh, but I love them because it's content. And that would be hypocrites, just in general. We're going to talk about hypocrites. I've got a few topics with hypocrites in it for, for this particular episode. But this one, you may have heard about this. There is a bar owner in Cincinnati who has ref has refused, and I don't want to get too much into the backstory of this, um, but there was a tweet from LeBron James, even if you don't follow sports, you know who LeBron James is. There's a tweet from him. He deleted it. It could have been construed as somewhat controversial. Uh, again, I don't want to get into that. But what happened was this bar owner in Cincinnati uh, decided he's no longer going to show NBA games in his bar until LeBron is expelled from the league. LeBron James, that's right. That LeBron James. You probably Many of you don't listen. We don't have a huge listenership that, that, that watches sports. You know who LeBron James is. He's kind of the face of the NBA. So he wants him expelled from, from the NBA uh, before he will show NBA basketball games in his bar ever again. And he said this because he expects athletes uh, to, this is the old adage, stick to sports. Stay out of politics. Stay out of other things. And this, this is the amazing part about all of this. This guy is saying this, but at the same time, he's injecting himself instead of just staying 
as a sports bar owner and play in the fucking games. Like you, you can complain, but I always, it, it, it just amazes me how people complain without realizing that they are doing the same thing that they are complaining about. This is common sense. I put it in digital because it was blowing up on, but this is common sense. And here we have a bar owner in Cincinnati who wants the face of the NBA to be expelled from the league uh, so that he can show NBA games on his crappy little televisions in his, I'm going to guess, shitty little sports bar there in Cincinnati. Nothing against Cincinnati. Uh, it's just this guy doesn't sound like he would be a reputable business owner. So maybe avoid that bar. He, he did come out afterward and say uh, that business is booming now. And that's fine. There's there's a lot of racists in Ohio. No offense, Ohio, but there's a lot of them there who probably think this is great. And they just don't want a a man of color, a black man in the NBA to be voicing his opinion. So, yeah, I'm sure business is doing fine. Uh, but the hypocrisy is astounding in this particular situation. All right, we got a couple trends that are going on the the, plat- the social platform. The, uh, Huh? The digital platforms, I guess the social platforms, the digital platforms, digital trends. Got to keep my, got to keep my segments straight here. It's been one of those, you know. It's recovering from Dropkick Murphys last night. I'll be honest. Just barbecuing some brats and hot dogs and having a few drinks and uh, enjoying the Dropkick Murphys live stream, which I'll talk a little bit about uh, as we get to entertainment news. Uh, but before then, hashtag I wish people would stop. This goes hand in hand. With the previous digital trends topic. Hashtag, I wish people would stop uh, being hypocrites. (laughs) There are really endless possibilities with this. Uh, For me, it's, 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 for me, the biggest thing, I wish people would stop caring only about themselves. Around the world, but especially in the United States, the United States has to be the worst as a country when it comes to this. People don't care about anything unless it's a benefit to themselves, it affects them. There's no compassion for other people. There's no humanity for other people. Now, I'm not saying there's none. But we probably, uh, the United States probably does the worst of that out of all the countries in the world. Now, I'm developed countries in the world. And I wish people would just start caring about others and not just themselves. But we'll see if that ever happens. I also wish people would stop being hypocrites, like that bar owner in Cincinnati. Uh, hashtag, I'm patiently waiting for. Hashtag, I'm patiently waiting for. Uh, there was a lot of funny ones out there. I didn't want to share any with you because I wanted to just say hashtag I'm patiently waiting for shows. Give me, give me the shows, please. All of the shows. And we're getting so close. In fact, as we get into COVID updates, we know that California is still doing the best state uh, as a state uh, for the entire. And actually, I take that back because I don't know if it had shifted yet. Uh, we're actually, we were t- technically number two. Uh, last time I checked, b- behind Hawaii, but we're number one in the continental United States. Uh, you know, Hawaii, fortunately for them, they just they had to cut off, you know, extra vacationing there and stuff, and you can get it, you can get it under control. But California, of, of the of the continental United States, the ones that are all connected, we are doing the best, uh, and I think by far, number one improvement in the U.S. And and we have to keep it up, though. That's the thing. Uh, we can't let our guard down now, by any means. We're getting close just because we're doing good doesn't mean we can, you know, that, that's what we did during the summer when everyone's, oh, no, we're doing great. And then, whoops, that didn't quite work, did it? Uh, so it, it's good news, but uh, we, we have to still be cautious. Cautious. I would like to see some damn shows, please. Uh, CDC updated their mask guidelines, and I don't even want to get into the intricacies of this. I understand what they're doing, but basically saying that the masks are much less necessary now for people who are vaccinated. And I I get it. Uh, Here's the thing for me. I'm still going to wear a mask. And while it's nice that we're seeing improvements and and we can become more lenient on things, uh, this maybe this isn't the best idea just yet. Because what's going to happen is uh, people that actually care about what's going on probably still going to wear masks. And then for people that aren't even vaccinated yet and haven't wanted to wear masks from the beginning, this is now just their excuse. They're going to come out and say, see, we never had to wear masks. It's like, no, 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 no. They're just saying now you don't have to. Or they're saying, oh, I'm fully vaccinated. I can be in this store without a mask. The CDC says so. And the CDC doesn't actually say you can be inside with a crowd of people with no mask. But it's just making excuses available for people that haven't cared from the beginning. So use caution out there. Just use common sense. For the love of God, it's... 
I, you know, I went to the park yesterday with my, my wife and kid. It's a huge open park near us. And they have a playground, and there's like two other kids, and we're nowhere near any other kids, you know. But all three of us out there with a mask. My kid's four. She can wear a fucking mask. I can wear a fucking mask. We're out there for like an hour and a half. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Get over yourselves. Protect others. And uh, and eventually we're going to get through this. Just, we can keep idiots from screwing it up for, for the rest of us. Then, uh, then we'll, we'll get there. Uh, and we're just, we're just, it's not time to let our guard down overall. Uh, I have some friends and family that are like, oh yeah, we're good now. It's like, no, 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 we are not actually good, uh, until we have herd immunity. And I get it. Everyone's like, I'm vaccinated. There's, I, you know, I, there's very minimal chance I can get it. I totally understand that. And I would probably be in a similar boat, uh, if I didn't have a four-year-old at home. My kid can't get vaccinated. So... For things to be back to normal for my family, uh, we have to have herd immunity. So I'm not risking my four-year-old. I don't care if it's a point zero 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 one chance. Uh, that's a point zero 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 one chance that my daughter gets sick. And an even smaller chance, but there's the chance that she gets that heart condition that kids have, some kids have got from COVID. So no, I, I'm not there yet. I'm not. And, you know, like I said, I went out to the park. There's things that I've become more lenient on myself, but I'm still not I'm not flying places. I'm not going crazy. I'm not traveling to other communities. It's just not happening yet until we have herd immunity. Just not happening. All right, let's move on to uh, oh, mental health. Mental health this week. I don't actually don't have a ton of stuff, but I, I you know, I want to talk about a couple things real quick, and then we'll move along here. I said we're just it's hot in the studio. I need that air conditioning kicking on. We've had strange weather here in Southern California. It cooled off a little bit, and then we got to like 95 the other day. I walked outside. I said, nope, back inside. Air conditioning on, back inside. Uh, you know, and during the summer here in California, it gets into the 90s, but <laughs> it's it was April still. It's barely May now. I'm not ready for the heat, and uh, it's a little better today, but I can still feel the heat kind of emanating through the windows and stuff. It's like, oh, boy, here comes summer. And uh, I am not a heat person. I know uh, so many people love the heat. My wife is one of them. She's like, yes, bring on that. I'm like, no. No, I would take like 65 to 70 during the day every single day of the year if I could get it. And like 55 to 60 at night. That's what I'd take. It's great sleeping weather. It's comfortable. You can wear a sweatshirt if you want to. You're not sweating. Every That's the thing. Is I, I run hot all the time anyway. So when it's 95 degrees out, like I forget about it. All right, mental health, like I said. I'm noticing a lot of a lot more positivity coming out uh, lately. I think I mentioned this last episode that I'm feeling a little re- re-energized myself, and uh, I took a couple weeks to really focus on myself. I'm still doing that, um, kind of ignoring the outside noise, if you will, and and focusing on building on kind of the good things over the past year with with improving myself personally and, and just focusing inward on that as opposed to. You know, everything else that's happening. Uh, and, and I don't know that it's necessarily that. It's probably that for some people. But I, I think now seeing the end in sight, you know, we've always kind of known, you know, as, even as the year turned, it was like, okay, we, we know we're going to... You you can really see the end in sight here. Now, I know other countries are doing quite badly. I mean, India, you, you, you can't help but feel sorry for them. But here in the U.S., we're in a pretty good place. And we can see that we are going to get there. Now it's not a question of if. It was never a question of if, but now we can really see the when. You know, we absolutely can see the when. And uh, and I think that's that's improved a lot of people's thinking and, and mental mental health uh, overall and just kind of their comfort level with with being around people and life and, and that kind of thing. So I think that is a positive side to, to where we're moving. As much as we're not out of it yet, we got to keep staying focused. I think it's helpful to see to really see that now. Seeing more and more people getting vaccinated. Like, ever, everyone I talk to or run into, you know, like, walking by on the street and like, oh, yeah, I got my, you know. And I, I'm fully vaccinated as of Wednesday. I have two weeks removed from my second shot. So I'm, like, fully. My wife as well. Um, but we still have a we still have a little ways to go. Uh, and from a mental health standpoint, I want to share this fun, this story with you. It's, it's funny, but I realized afterward that I, two things about it. And we'll get into that. But, um. So when I come into the studio on Sundays, or really, you know, when, when I started, whenever I come into the studio to record something, uh, my phone goes on silent. <laughs> I've actually, uh, some of you may remember from live feeds, I've been burned by that before. 
And sometimes I'll forget to put my tablet on silent. And you hear, you know, luckily that doesn't start ringing. Uh, but I put my phone on silent. Not not even, like, vibrate, just silent. Like, don't bother me. It's in my pocket right now. I could It could be blowing up. I have no idea. Uh, and usually, you know, by Sunday evening, with Common Sense Sundays, I turn, it, I turn the volume back on. You know, just in case I can hear it. Uh, well, last Sunday I forgot. Uh, I also forgot Monday. And it was Tuesday evening. When I looked at my phone, I remembered, like, oh... My phone is on silent. And here's the thing. I didn't really notice. Obviously didn't notice for two days. And I think it was actually helpful to me to not constantly be like, oh, my phone beeped. My phone beeped. Now, obviously, uh, you know, it, it, you need to have a phone for people to get in touch with you. Here, here's the thing is uh, one of the little known things about being married or even in a long-term relationship uh, is... Anyone that needs to get in touch with me for an emergency, if they don't get me right away, they're going to call my wife. So I didn't have that stress of, like, I get that with the emergency status of people and whatever else, but it was really nice. not. And I was still looking. It wasn't like, oh, I put my phone in a... No, no, no. I still looked at my phone, you know, and Monday mornings I'm doing work for, for, for Go Tell It to the Wall, um, but it was just on silent. So I wasn't constantly like, oh, my phone's beeping, oh, my phone's vibrating, oh, what's going on here? So depending on your situation, I kind of recommend it. I also, and on that same note, and this hadn't even thought about this before, but I, I put on a Do Not Disturb, and I'm sure no matter what kind of phone you have, you can put on a Do, do Not Disturb at night, and, and my phone, like, stops making noise, I want to say from, like, midnight to 8 a.m. or something like that. Um, and if you're not aware of this, going back to, like, the emergency call, you know, what if, you know, what if my parents call or my kid calls or whatever it is, uh, you can actually... It, it's do not disturb, but you can actually um, tell it certain phone numbers uh, that can disturb you during that time. It's brilliant. So I have like three numbers that can disturb me during that time, and that's it. I'm like, okay, if any, these three, if there's an emergency, yes. Uh, so that could be beneficial as well. If, if you're not aware of that, try that out. Try it out. Uh, and, of course, before we move on, May, every year, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we're going to spend the next few episodes, well, no episode next week, but our May episodes, we will be touching on Mental Health Awareness Month, and, you know, certain things, uh, programs, everything else, and, and the things that can help any of you out there, help others that you know that might deal with a mental illness. Uh, but something was brought up this year, and, and I've kind of touched on this before, but it, it was really at the forefront this year. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. It's not Mental Illness Awareness Month. So I think, especially given this year, with what everyone's been through over the past year plus, uh, is is we we need to focus on everyone's mental health, whether you have a mental illness or not. So take time this month to take care of yourself. Maybe reflect a little and know what you want moving forward, whether you have a mental illness or not, what you want moving forward. Because whether you deal with something debilitating, like like I do at times, or it just comes and goes and, you know, you have a certain anxiety problems. Or maybe just stuff has popped up over the past year because you've been stuck inside. Pandemic, everything else, and the, the, the world that we live in. Take that time this month. And raise awareness for everybody taking care of their mental health. Regardless of what they deal with. But I will say the same thing I say every year. And I will definitely mention this again in the last episode of May is uh, remember that many, many, many people that suffer from mental illness, uh, they deal with it 12 months out of the year, not just during May. So keep that in mind as well. And we'll talk more about that uh, over the next few episodes uh, because it is May and it is Mental Health Awareness Month. All right, I need a little water here before we get into some some parenting. (laughs) Some good parenting this week. Very simple parenting. Uh, but good parenting stuff this week that that I have found and have been enjoying. Um, and it, this is, obviously, this is a cliche. And you, you hear this about cats, too. Like cats, you know, you buy them this nice cat tower and they want to play in a box. Um, kids are the same way. Kids of, cer- well, of a certain age. I think teenagers aren't playing with the box for, like, their Xbox or something. But And uh, for mine, everywhere has just absolutely become a play area. Now, that's partly because of the pandemic, uh, but I think it's just also that stage that she's in. In fact... Uh, she ha- she has very large play areas. She has a tent full of stuffed animals in the living room. She has a large play area in there. She has an activity table. 
Uh, she has a giant Barbie dream house. And then she, that, none of that's even in her room. <laughs> She's got her own room uh, with some extra toys and stuffed animals and a reading nook and all this stuff in it. She's got plenty of like designed areas, but she still will move everywhere else. In fact, right now, uh, there are toys outside the studio door. This door behind me, the one behind me, not to there, there, behind me, uh, there's actually a bunch of toys there right now, and it's essentially an obstacle course when I come walking out of the studio. My kid likes to sit there and play. It's it's pretty, pretty amusing. And in fact, uh, our bed has become a play area. It's always a little bit of a play area. And I think I mentioned this before. She likes to, she'll come crawl in bed um, first thing in the morning. Uh, my wife's usually up and out of bed and, and getting ready, and I'm still, you know, making my way out of bed. Uh, and my, my kid will come crawling, and she'll just, she, she likes to lay, for, lay in bed for a little while. And um, so she constantly, she likes to go hide in there. She'll hide under the comforter and stuff. The other day, there's a bunch of stuffed animals in there. I looked, I was like, oh, great. She's got all these stuffed animals in there. Well, I think that's what it was. We're watching a crane uh, out her back window, and she wants, she's like, oh, I want all the, I want all my stuffed animals. <laughs> great. Okay. So they're all in the bed. Later in the day, I'm like, oh, I got to clean those up. And my wife goes to bed before I do. It was the other night. Like a few minutes before I do. And I come walking back. Five minutes after her, she's in bed under the covers. And instead of moving the stuffed animals off the bed, she moved them all to my side of the bed. So I walk in. It's like midnight on like a Tuesday. And I'm just like, okay. What am I going to do with these stuffed animals? And my kid's in her room sleeping. I'm like, I'm not going to bring the stuffed animals back in there right now. It's midnight. I'm wake her. Nope. So stuffed animals all over my dresser. They have since been moved, but... That's all over my dresser. And the best thing with that, as far as her making her own like play area things, is as I mentioned, she has this gigantic Barbie dream house. Uh, my mother gave it to her. My mother and father gave it to her for Christmas. Uh, th- but then late, because we didn't spend Christmas. She's had it for like a month or whatever, since Easter. And uh, and she plays She loves it. She plays with it. Uh, but my wife had ordered this little like desk shelf to put... Uh, in her craft area to hold all of like her coloring books and crayons and markers and stuff. It was just like a shelf, a basic little shelf. And I would built it and it was sitting there and I was, I was waiting. My wife, I wanted her to, you know, she had a vision of how it was going to get set up. So I left it there. And uh, like after my daughter gets up from her nap, it's sitting there. And I look over, she's playing, you know, and she's having a snack and we're hanging out. And I realize, I'm like, what is going on? She's putting her little Barbie dogs from the Barbie dream house into the shelves and I sit there and watching her. I'm going, okay, okay. She's like, this is this is their house. I'm like, she's she's about three feet from the Barbie Dream House doing this. This is their house. Okay, okay. Well, no, maybe. Okay, maybe it's the dog house. Then she starts moving the table, like the dining room table, from the all the stuff from the house three feet over to this little like black shelf thing, and started using that as the house instead of the actual Barbie Dream House. So yes, for those of you out there without kids, that does happen quite a bit. And in fact, my ultimate favorite was she has a lot of toys. I, like, and I'll admit, my kid has a lot of toys. Probably she's got grandparents and aunts and uncles and so much. Like everybody just sends her stuff. I have, like random friends. She'll get a package. I'm like, who the hell is this from? And my wife's like, oh, it's from my friend. And kid. like, what? Okay, cool. Is it her, like did I miss her? No, it's not her birthday. And, and again, no problem. She has so many toys. Um, and this was pointed out while we were doing video call with some relatives and they were like, yeah, she's got so many toys. And I look down at what she's playing with while they're sitting there talk, like she's kind of fiddling around. She's literally playing with a broken balloon and some pebbles like this big that she brought in, not even like tiny pebbles that she brought in from outside. <laughs> I just went, I turned to them and I'm like, she does have a lot of toys, but she's currently playing with a, with a popped balloon and rocks. So Yeah. But that's parenting. <laughs> that's a big part of parenting is the ways they, they find toys. And, you know, forget about it. She, that's the thing. My, my kid is, any anything's a play area. Obviously, she d- she knows not to come in here. She knows not to mess with, like, computers and cameras and stuff. Uh, but any open floor area that is not studio-related or, like, you know, tool bench-related, she's like, yep, this is mine now. <laughs> All over the house. And the memes are true. The Legos don't feel good to step on. I can tell you that. All right, let's move on to some common sense. Oh, I'm going to do my best here to to rein it in a bit. Uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, the uh, number one podcasting guy in the country or the world or whatever. 
I have zero interest in listening to him. It's toxic masculinity, and he supports weird things that I don't support. But hey, do you, Joe? This one I have a problem with. He had a recent episode uh, where he, he stated that people 21 and under should not get the vaccine because it is not good for them, and they are young and healthy and should not get the vaccine if they are young. So, of course, this turned into a huge controversy. And here's the thing. Joe Rogan is allowed to have his opinion. Unfortunately, we live in a time where you can just get a microphone and a computer and you can put it out there. And Joe Rogan has a gigantic audience and a gigantic paycheck from Spotify. He's telling people not to do this. And my favorite part about that is there's a Bill Burr clip. He was interviewing Bill Burr. And he starts trying to go Bill Burr into like, oh, what about the CDC and something like that? And he's like, you know what? We're sitting here. You're sitting under an American flag. We're smoking cigars while we talk on a podcast. We're not doctors. Well, don't start this. We're not going to talk like that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good idea. I don't try to give you medical advice. I give you common sense advice. I'm not a doctor, but I know you should get the fucking vaccine. Here's the kicker on all of that. The hypocrisy on all of that is we have a guy who's been injecting himself with testosterone and testosterone and steroids for like, what, 20 plus years? He's been doing this 20 plus years. He's been injecting himself with God knows what. And that's the guy you want to take advice from? Not the guy, maybe he can give you a workout plan. Or, you know, a place to get your, your HGH, your testosterone injections. But let's not take medical advice from the guy. I don't think you should take any advice from him, let alone medical advice. Listen to the doctors. That's, that's the best way to go is listen to the doctors. Not some loudmouth podcaster who probably has muscle and testosterone where his brain was at one time. Here come, all, here come all the Joe Rogan fans with their hate mail. We don't have a lot of listenership crossover, but there's a little bit. I've gotten them before because I call it like it is. Toxic masculinity. All right, here we go. One more thing in common sense that I want to talk about. I just had two brief things, but they are quite big. This one hit me really good this week simply because I am very well aware of this culture and what happens and everything else. And you might have heard about this. The the Catholic bishops here in the U.S., I don't want to get into background, but you have the Pope, you have the Cardinals, and you have the bishops. They're all distributed, you know. So every what's called the diocese has a bishop. Well, these bishops in the U.S., they get together and they meet on things and they decide that, that Jesus wanted things a certain way, even though they're not talking to Jesus, they're just making shit up. And they apparently have decided that they are going to meet and most likely... Ask Joe Biden to stop receiving communion. For those of you that know nothing about the Catholic Church, that's the little cracker they give you. When you, see, you, know, you walk up, they give you a little cracker. I'm not going to get into transubstantiation. If you're aware of that, that's fine. If you're interested in it, go look it up. I grew up in it. I know too much about it. But they're going to tell him uh, that he shouldn't receive communion. Because in the Catholic Church, if you, if, you are, uh, if you are a sinner, you are technically not allowed to receive the little cracker. That's their rule. And we're not even talking like big sin. You're actually supposed to go to confession. You've all heard of confession where you ask forgiveness before you get communion if you have sinned. Well, they're saying that this is because Joe Biden is pro-choice. Now, before I get into the rest of this, I would like to point out that being pro-choice does not mean you are pro-abortion. It simply means you are pro-choice. There is a difference. Get that through your head right now if you don't realize that there is a huge difference. And on top of that, nowhere in the Bible does it say that abortion shouldn't happen. There's lots of other things in the Bible. In fact, Jesus specifically says that the death penalty should not, doesn't say, I don't think he calls it the death penalty if I remember correctly, but the death penalty should not exist. You should not kill people who are criminals. That's in the Bible. And it's amazing the political crossover of people who are in favor of capital punishment, the death penalty, uh, and, and are against people being pro-choice. So that's number two. Here's number three. And what is it, Wall fans? What is it? What do we love here at Go Tell Us The Wall? Love and hate. Love for the content, hate for the people. Hypocrisy. I've dealt with this firsthand. I'm not going to name names, as you know, if you've listened, 
I grew up Catholic, 13 years of Catholic education, altar server, uh, taught religious education, fourth degree knight of Columbus, state chief squire of the Colombian squires of California. Been there. We had a priest at my, my church growing up. He used to like to do this. Refused people communion. Over minimal things. Minimal things. As if he was God making this decision. Well, here's where the hypocrisy comes in, ball fans. This same priest who was telling people that they couldn't get communion because they had sinned was actually found out to have been having an affair with a married woman whom he was counseling as a priest. I'm not making this shit up, wall fans. I fucking watched it. It's a fucking fact. And if you want to send me a message, I'll give you names and everything. Because I'm fucking sick of it. I'm sick of the hypocrisy here. This is all just a political move. The church wants to get into politics without paying any taxes and just willy-nilly deciding things that, that other people wouldn't even agree with. This is why I don't appreciate the Catholic Church. I don't appreciate Rome. I'm not saying everyone in the Catholic Church is, is wrong or bad. But these are the stances that are coming down from the higher-ups within the Catholic Church. And the hypocrisy is astounding. So we'll see what happens with this. But that's why I have nothing to do with the Catholic Church. It's amazing. Amazing. Kids are starving, and they're like, "Oh no, we're gonna, we're 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 worried about this guy getting the little cracker on Sundays." Fuck you, Jesus! All right, entertainment news. Hmm, we are getting short on time, so we're gonna run through some of this stuff. Uh, I'm not well versed with in uh, in soccer or fo football, you know, as as they call it everywhere about the U.S. I'm not well versed in it, but I you know I know a few things, and I was kind of following this whole Super League thing. Uh, but this this was nuts, uh, as you know. You know, uh, soccer fan, very, very people that are into soccer, very into it. Uh, the Manchester United team, obviously, they they play in uh, Manchester, England. Um, they had a game today. Fans stormed the field before the game started. The game hadn't started. They apparently did this in protest of the owner, and I think this does have to do with the whole Super League thing. And there was a lot of controversy going on over there uh, with European soccer or football. You know, um, and they were protesting the team owner. They actually ended up getting the game postponed. That's like, talk about passion for your team. Like, the game didn't even start yet, and they got the thing postponed. So that's pretty wild. <laughs> I woke up that this morning, I was like, what? Oh, okay. I just, I can't, I, you know, that, that would never happen. That's the thing. No, no one in the U.S. has enough passion for that. For that to happen in the U.S., <laughs> they just don't like not about sports. You know, I mean, other things, yes, Black Lives Matter and stuff, yes, but but not sp not sports. Oh man! All right, Cobra Kai. Oh God, I love that show. Cobra Kai season four has officially wrapped, wrapped production and shooting. Uh, we don't have a premiere date yet, uh, but we know that it's wrapped. So they're 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 going into post. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with with uh, with how things get scheduled out, uh, so we don't have that yet. But I cannot wait. For that one to premiere, I'm really glad to see, you know, a lot of shows were able to to kind of get through the pandemic and still shoot and do things, um, and now it's really ramping back up. I mean, Cobra Kai was one of those that was shooting, obviously, uh, not quite at the height, I don't think, but during COVID, and now that they're done with production, so looking forward to that. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a premiere date soon here at some point. Uh, and this one's old news, but uh, I found a new show that I absolutely love on Netflix, and it's called The Last Kingdom. It's actually a British show. Uh, and it's based on novels by, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, because I didn't e I didn't even realize it was novels. And then I went, I was like, oh, there's a whole book series about, you know, uh, that this is based on, The Last Kingdom. It's all about the birth of England, um, which for those of you that know me, you know I'm a big Arthurian legend fan. Uh, so this is kind of hand in hand with Arthurian legend. I don't know if they're, if they're going Arthurian yet, uh, but it is uh, the birth of England, like, the Britons and the Saxons, you know, this whole thing. Uh, really, really good. If you're looking for a new show to watch and you're into the, those kind of things, check it out. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't argue with anybody about it. And it doesn't just have to do with the ending. Uh, I'm only like six episodes into this show. 
better than Game of Thrones, in my opinion. Hands down better than Game of Thrones. And I'm not not basing that simply on the, the terrible ending of Game of Thrones uh, or the, the terrible last season of Game of Thrones. Just in even the height of Game of Thrones so far, I, I would put this one uh, personally as better uh, than Game of Thrones. So, so check it out. If you're into that kind of stuff, check it out. The Last Kingdom. I love it. It's so good. Like, so good. Uh, Burning Man canceled. That's right. Not surprising um, at all. I, every, everyone that is even remotely connected to the Burning Man community knew this was coming. Uh, unfortunately, I think there's still going to be a ton of people that go out there. Still gonna, it's still going to be nuts out there where Burning Man is held. Uh, in fact, I think it's going to be worse than last year. Because I've even seen people that were like, that's crazy. You can't go out there You know, for 2020. Uh, that are like, oh yeah, no, I'm going out there this year because it's you know it's public land. You can go out there. There's just no huge Burning Man event organized. Uh, also, terrifying because it is camping, uh, you know, and everything else. But and Burning Man, they really don't provide anything. They provide a place to buy ice. <laughs> they provide a place to that you can buy coffee um, and safety. You know, obviously. Uh, they, but they there's no trash service. There's there's none of that stuff. No trash cans. Uh, but the important thing they do provide is Porto's, Port, not Porto's, the restaurant, Porta Potties. Uh, so when you have hmm, a couple thousand people descending on, on the playa uh, this year with no Porto's, there's going to be a lot of poop out there in the desert. I can see it now. Poop. Poop for miles. <laughs> we'll see. I'm not going out there. Zero interest. Uh, Hell Omega Euro Tour, the Euro leg of the tour, Hell Omega Tour Euro leg, has now officially been postponed for a year. Kind of knew this was coming. Just got got officially announced this week. It does so far. We are moving forward with the U.S. leg of the tour. Uh, so as of now, I'm still planning to be at Dodger Stadium in July, uh, seeing the Hell Omega tour. Uh, so we'll see. I, I, you know, I still don't know. I think a lot of this has to do with travel problems. All all the Hell Omega tour bands are U.S. based. They're from the U.S. This is and I, I talked about this a few episodes ago when I was like I. You know, one of my absolute favorite bands is the Barstool Preachers, as you all know. They can't get to the U.S. right now. Like, can't get to the U.S. I would love for you guys to get over to the U.S. Uh, so I think that's part of it is just the travel restrictions and logistics. Uh, and, I mean, here, right now in California, it's looking good. Like, they're they're doing stuff at stadiums and everything else. So it's going to be really interesting, real interesting to see how that shakes out. Um, and we'll kind of keep everyone updated as, as stuff comes out. And if you're hitting up Hell and Make a Tour here in Los Angeles, uh, hit me up. Hit me up there on SeanWorkLive.com. Try not to use the chat function. Jeez, the chat box is still on there. Just use the emailing function. It's easier that way. Uh, Dropkick Murphys, they had their, their live stream yesterday. It was fantastic. I actually uh, had my sis Laura come over because uh, we are all fully vaccinated now. And uh, we were able... That's... If you've listened, that's... I, that's Her and I go to all the shows together. All of them. We miss... <laughs> it's been It's been a rough year uh, for us um, among many other people that are used to going to a lot of shows. Uh so I'm looking forward to when we can start doing that again. But it was nice to to spend that time uh, with my wife and kid and with my sis Laura and and just enjoying that live stream and just and having a little bit of normalcy back, you know, just a little bit of that normalcy back as as we as we move toward it. Uh, but we did get a big announcement from them. Uh, the Dropkick Murphys have actually scheduled a tour with the Interrupters. Uh, unfortunately, this is this tour is happening in Europe. Uh, it is a 2022 tour. It's starting in, I, I think it was, it was January or February. I can't remember these, but it's 2022. Uh, they are announcing uh, 2021 tour dates very, very soon. I am hoping that this will also be a Dropkick Murphys Interrupters small tour uh, because Interrupters will be done with Hell Omega as long as all that goes as planned. They'll be done with that before the end of August. So we could get a little fall tour with Dropkick Murphys and the Interrupters, uh, and the uh, Interrupters, even if they're not headlining, they <laughs> pretty much always play Southern California, because uh, that's where that's where the majority of them are from originally, and then Amy's pretty much, she's lived in Southern California a very long time, she's just not originally from Southern California, it's kind of like me, she, I mean, she lived outside of Southern California even longer, but people are like, you're not a California native, I'm like, nope, born in Florida, just moved here when I was seven, so it's hard to Hard to differentiate, uh, but I'll be hoping for a U.S. leg in 2021. Even if it's just Dropkick Murphys, uh, I'll be t I'll be taking every, like every single concert. I'm like tickets, tickets, tickets. Up, oh, yep, up, oh, up. Oh, okay, let's go concerts. All right, and one more thing before we end for this week. Uh, it is May 2nd, so of course that means yesterday a new Bassists Against Racists design 
was announced and shown. Uh, this one actually features Joe from Rise Against. Uh, and of course, it is the exquisite artwork of the great Zombie Teeth, uh, as well as the production uh, from Chaos Merch. Love Chaos Merch. Love Gabby Chaos. And of course, the brainchild uh, of Gabby Chaos and Lynn of Bad Cop, Bad Cop. Uh, and for those of you in Europe that are listening, uh, you, you wouldn't get it through Chaos Merch. You'd get it through T-Mom. Same designs through T-Mom. They're up for pre-order now. Uh, you have until the end of the month to pre-order that one. I don't know. I might pick up this Joe one. Uh, I've got a couple of them, but I, I I keep reining myself in. I'm like, I don't need to have all 12 bases against racist shirts, uh, but we'll see. Maybe I'll pick that one up. It's okay. You can never have you can never have too many t-shirts uh, unless you look at my closet and you say, oh no, yes, you can have too many t-shirts. I just can't stop myself sometimes. <laughs> all right. On that note, get yourself a basis against racist shirt. Uh, and on that note. That's going to do it for us. Uh, no new show next week. We will be back in two weeks. Same wall place, same wall time. Uh, remember, in the meantime, to uh, to go ahead and follow us on all the social platforms. Facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. YouTube, head on over to YouTube. Search go tell it to the wall. Subscribe to our channel. Of course, on Instagram, uh, my personal username is at SoCalSean, S-O-C-A-L-S-E-A-N. Uh, and most importantly would be SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Head over there, bookmark it, get yourself some merch, become a patron uh, if you have the means to do so. And it, it, it is greatly appreciated. All right. Uh, as I said, this has been episode 45 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell Us the Wall, hosted by me, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. Uh, and until next time, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, remember, no matter what you do, no matter who you're with, no matter where you go, no matter why, you are doing it. Always, always use... Common sense.